what's going on. Hi, my name is Linda Howard, and I am the mother of Nathaniel Green Jr. that we call Nate. Streets got a hold of my life. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background of his early upbringing. Um, Nate has always been a very rambunctious child, always been very interested in all kind of sports. He excelled as, I guess they call it a triple A, all around athletic, uh, playing for the Bay Ruth uh, League, uh, all-star athletic in high school, um, very fast at the mouth. Um, He's very lovable, but he's determined to have things his way. Uh, he took a bad turn in life. It was a long haul, but I gave him a one-way ticket out of town because nothing I was doing was helping him. In other words, I was enabling him. But when I gave him that one-way ticket out of town, I turned around and I told him, I said, you wanna die, go somewhere else. And apparently that was a turning point in his life. Uh, he's never been back on the street since, and I love my son very much. Jersey City. Uh, uh, when I was growing up, there was a lot of um, families that stuck together and did things together. It was, the neighborhoods were more together. And of course, like any other family, there was some dysfunction, drugs, alcohol, fighting. You know, it was just like, you know, my family, you know, no matter what, they stuck together. My mom was the rock, still is the rock. My pops, and then out my life. Come to find out later on that he had uh, reasons. Were they excusable? I don't know, but he brought some of his childhood into his adulthood, which I didn't find out until later on which gave me the ability to forgive him in spite of him not being in my life. If he was in my life, would I have been a different person? Would things have turned out better? Who knows? But ultimately, at this age, I understand that God makes all the plans. You can't plan the outcome. And we just have to do what we have to do. But while in Jersey City, you know, I can remember all the way back, you know, living on Monticello, when my pops was there with my moms, you know. He laid the law down, you know. But, um, you know, my, 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 my aunts, my uncles, you know, my Aunt Kyle, miss her daily. My Uncle Larry, miss him daily. You know, they was in my life real heavy. Cousin Smokey, Earl. Uh, you know, it's just so many family members that played a part in my life. And um, they're not here with me today, but, in my heart. Growing up, moving around from house to house, home to home, block to block. I lived all over Jersey City. You know, we started on Grand Street, Holiday, Whitening, Neptune, Bayview, Ormian, and we ended up on Brand Mall and Randolph, our final destination. And through all those moves, I ended up in different schools. You know, 22 was my first school. You know, I got put out of there for fighting. You know, from 22, I went to 40. You know, that was a brief stay, you know, because of me moving around. Then I went to 41. I got put out of there for fighting. After I left 41, you know, I went to 14. I put out a four, PS 14 for fighting. After 14, I went to PS 12. You know, um, I had some problems there also, but uh, they allowed me to move to the next grade, which was 11th school. You know, and um, I graduated from 11th school. It's a diverse grammar school. All ethnic backgrounds, all races, all creeds, all colors. It was, it was beautiful. It was enlightening to me, and I think it broadened my point of perspective. St. Annie's was... You know, he was doing some things that I couldn't get mad. You know what I mean? So what I did was, you know, I told my mother, we going, I'm going to Ferris. I get over to Ferris and 
It was like 11 school, diverse. Black, white, Spanish, Jewish, Hebrew, Greek. So I dated a Greek girl, her name was CM. <laughs> she was cute, name, name fucked up, but she was cute. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, um, uh, Ferris was, what can I say, man? Ferris was the truth. It was the truth, man. I played all three sports, basketball, baseball, football. I went in the door starting varsity, basketball, baseball, and football. Once again, sports saved me from the nonsense. And I live right around the corner from Lincoln. So a lot of people that went to Lincoln that I'm growing up with now, like, yo, why you go to Lincoln? I don't know, I'm glad I didn't go to Lincoln. Because if I done went to Lincoln, I probably wouldn't have finished. Yeah. St. Andy's, um, that's what they did, and I went to Ferris. And I get over there, like I said, I walked in the door. Varsity baseball, varsity basketball, varsity football. The varsity football, I moved the quarterback out, Reggie Rose. My bad, dog. <laughs> I moved him out of his spot. <laughs> I moved him out. You know what I mean? Coming from the streets, bringing it to the field, it was nothing. It was like I was like a natural at that thing, man. So green and gold. Is, green is my favorite color. Green and gold has been my color all my life. Mary Stars was green and gold. Ferris is green and gold. You know what I mean? So uh, even one of the pony leagues I played for was green and gold. So green and gold been on my color damn near all my life, and I love green. You so I'm, I'm at Ferris, and, and, and things is lovely, man. Things is lovely at Ferris, man. You know, the teachers love me. Um, I'm, I'm kind of popular in the school. You know what I mean? Things was just good, man. Yeah, I, I, I know today to this day, I don't see why kids don't like going to school. Not to say that I was the brightest bulb. Not to say I was the brightest dude in school. You know what happened with, uh, you know, uh, athletes, especially celebrity athletes, and it still goes on. You know, you get a little special treatment. You know, you you might not have to turn in a few homework assignments. You know, you you might get a little, you know, passing on the grade here and there. And um, I can honestly say um, that kind of stuff hurts. I can honestly say that. It hurts you as an individual when you get passed along and those little favors are done for you as an athlete. It hurts. And I know a lot of athletes can, if they can get honest, will, can validate that. It hurt. And it's still to this day, because I'm okay with who I am today, who I've become. Now, it's still to this day, I have trouble spelling certain things. You know, and I ain't got no problem asking somebody, how do you spell something? I just don't. You know what I mean? Reading comprehension, I think it's developed more you know, since I've been out of school, uh, um, English, I think it developed more because I love writing. You know what I mean? I don't, you, just what they was trying to teach us in school, you know, run on sentence, punctuation, adjectives, adverbs, to know where a word properly needs to be placed. And I love that type of stuff right now. You know what I mean? So, but, you know, doing school, it wasn't important just as long as I got by. You know, and like I said, the sports, you know, it kept me, man. You know, and I had a few, I had two fights in school, two fights in school. You know, one one was um, minor, you know what I mean? It was just a little punch, that was it. But then there was the one, my senior year, you know, uh, where um, Arlington, you know, the crews were existing then. Once again, I said the Puma Boys and Montgomery, Booker T. Everybody had a crew. But at this time, Arlington, Midtown was beefing with Montgomery. And um, we got involved with that. And um, that thing lasted for about two two to three months, man. It lasted for like two, three months, and I got drawn in. i never forget, uh, I was at getting ready for football practice, and people was running back there, yo, Nate, they out there about to uh, jump your brother and, and, and your cousin, which which Drew and, and Shane, you know what I mean? I was like, huh? So when I start getting dressed, I run out there, the whole football team follow me. You know what I mean? We run outside and it's uh Soto my man today. We Facebook friends. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you know what happened. <laughs> you know what happened. It, it wasn't nothing real rugged, you know what I mean? But you know, we 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 boxed a little bit, then I gripped them up, put them in a DDT backwards chokehold, you know what I mean? And Nate Kitchens was standing on the side like, oh, y'all shouldn't wrestle, you should box. So I reached over and, you know, popped him in his mouth like, yo, this is a fight. Fuck you mean, you know, let him go and let's box, man. It's whatever in a fight, you know, but um, it almost got ugly because guns came out. Not with me, not with Soto, not with Nate Kitchen, 
other entities that were involved. People from Montgomery, people from Arlington, which over the years became cool. You know, we can sit back and laugh about it because no, I can't. And I believe everybody else can. Brian P, Supreme, you know, Big A, P Ski, B Ski, Trail, God bless the dead, Trail going right now. You know what I mean? You know, we can sit back and laugh at that right now. You know what I mean? But at, at that point, you know, guns came out. And that was one thing we didn't do back then. We didn't play with guns, man. We fought. We fought with these. If, if you wasn't good with these, man, you needed to just shut your mouth up. You know, take and, and even with these. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, it, it just, a lot has changed. A lot has changed, man. And I know from, 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 from me growing up, you know, it's the same thing with me that is today. Some of the things I saw the old heads doing, I thought was cool. I thought, well, oh, I need to be doing that. And, and in all reality, it wasn't cool what they was doing. It wasn't cool how they was living. It wasn't cool how they was selling drugs and lying and cheating and stealing and rock. It was, none of that was cool, man, but I fell into it. So if you can see, it's a vicious cycle. For all of us that made it out and we're present, presently living the day, man, we can honestly sit back and remember the old heads telling us something that we telling young boys now. Like, ain't nothing new under the sun, man. Ain't nothing new under the sun, man. Nothing. You know what I mean? You may think you're doing it different, just like we thought we was doing you it different. You may think you're repping a block, just like we thought we was repping a block. And all that loyalty to the game and everything, man, listen, man, ain't nothing new, man. So now, I, I can honestly say, like I, I've said numerous times before, if it wasn't for the sports, I don't think I would have made it out of high school. You know what I mean? Sports played a very important part for those four years of my life. It played a very important part. But unfortunately, you know, with those issues still going on, peer pressure, wanting to fit in, low self-esteem, wanting to be there, wanting to be cool. Because I think everybody goes through a period in their life, uh, uh, and a period in life where they deal with those type of issues. You still have grown ass folks dealing with that right now to this day. Wanting to fit in, peer pressure, wanting to be down. They may say, I, I don't, listen, your action speaks louder than your words. You know what I mean? And God forbid you start indulging in a substance. You know what I mean? Which became a part of my story. You know what I mean? For experimental use or recreational use or just having fun. You know what I mean? It became a part of my story. You know what I mean? You know, mind you, I left it alone in St. Anthony's, you know, because the sports took over. But junior year, sophomore year, you know, we drinking after the game or before the game. You know what I mean? Especially if we won. The drugs came into play, whether using or selling. It came into play, man. And, and, and it started picking us off one by one. Streets got a hold of my life. Huh? These streets got a hold of my life. Streets got a hold of my life. It started separating us. All that camaraderie, all that friendship we grew up with, it started separating us. It started dividing us. You know, and you had this one doing that and this one doing that. And I'm doing, it, it just wasn't a good look, man. And then, of course, with the lifestyle of that, guns come into play and everything started changing, man. And you couldn't trust nobody. You still can't trust nobody for real, for real. Everything started changing, man. And, and, you know, I, I went head deep into this game, man, head deep. You know, I tell anybody, the only thing I got to show for that lifestyle after school was 17 convictions, stabbed seven times, shot once. And I ran with some, you know, some thorough people. You know what I mean? I ran with some people that ain't here with me today. You know, and there are some people that ran with me that changed their life like I changed my life. Shout out to Hezzy Bay. You know what I mean? Who doing his thing down in, down in Patterson, New Jersey. You know what I mean? Like, there are some people who did some things and, and came up out of this game. You know what I mean? Um, but for the most part, you know, a lot of people, um, one of the things I realize about a lot of people is it's sad to say that it, for those that do make it to be 35, 40, 45 years old and have spent 30 years in that bullshit, you need to, you need to be grateful that you're getting a late start. I got a late start. I spent 10 years right at, at the high school. I spent 10 years wasting my life, man. 10 years in and out of jail. Hudson County was my second home. Northern State, I, I passed through there. Trenton, passed through there. Anderdale, passed through there. You know, it's a waste of time, man. I thank God I only wasted 10 years because I'm seeing brothers who have wasted 30, 40 years in that nonsense and now they want to come out. You know what I mean? Now they trying to do the right thing. 
And I ain't saying it's too late. I ain't saying it's too late. But it's hard. It's hard because you don't have an education. You're not properly educated. You don't have no trade, no skill. You're struggling with reading and writing. You can't put together a sentence. Your math is off. This ain't drug money math no more. You understand what I'm saying? Like all of these things are a necessity to continue to survive. You know what I mean? You, 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 you. Some I know some brothers that got so messed up in the game, man. Like that, their mental is off. You know they can't function properly mentally. You know what I mean? So like, it, 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 this, this life that I'm in right now, man. I never, I never saw it coming. But I thank God for it. I really do, man. I've spoken in schools. I, I'm, I'm ministering, talking to the youth in Philly. Uh, uh, I'm doing things that I'm not getting paid for. You know, I should be getting paid for, but it's cool because I believe in my heart that the reward that I'm getting, the paycheck that I'm getting is being stored with God. About the success side of it, because you haven't seen the transformation. I'm giving you bits and pieces of who I used to be. Now, who I am today, that's a whole nother monster, man. A whole nother monster. So, you know, uh, to any youth that is uh, watching this, viewing this, man, just know one, ain't nothing new under the sun. Two, I'm here. I don't did what you did, been where you've been, done what you done, thought what you thought. I'm past that. We, those of us who made it out, we trying to explain to you and tell you, man, like, listen, man, there's a better way and a different way, just like the old heads try to tell us. But what I do know is I'm not going to get frustrated with you not listening. I'm not going to get frustrated. I'm not going to, you know, lose any sleep because you don't, you didn't want to listen. And it's cool. I learned to surrender and accept the fact that people won't think what they want to think. You know what I mean? And I can't change their thoughts. The only thing I can change is me.